Hello, my name is Alex Gaffikin and I'm Head of Interpretation and Design here at the Australian National Maritime Museum and I'm going to give you a virtual tour of Wildlife Photographer of the Year, our exhibition which comes from the Natural History Museum in London. I'm going to start with a couple of highlights, the overall winners of the competition. So first up we have this wonderful colourful squid which was taken by Cruz Erdman who's only 13 years old and he took this photograph off the coast of Indonesia. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at the colours and the lights there on the squid. A beautiful photograph. Moving on, we've got the overall adult winner of the competition, which was taken by Zhongqing Bao in China. And what we've got here is a Tibetan marmot and a fox. The fox is surprising the marmot as it's coming out of its burrows. The competition is very serious, but I have to say, I just love the expression on the face of this marmot. It does make me giggle every time I see it. So now I'm going to show you a few more highlights of the exhibition. The competition is actually 55 years old and one of the first prizes was presented by David Attenborough 55 years ago. I used to work at the Natural History Museum in London so I can give you the inside scoop into what goes on behind the scenes. The first task for the jury is to wheedle out the pictures that don't conform to the rules. Wildlife Photographer of the Year, the clue is in the title, but they still get sent pictures of people's cats, cows, or the odd prize begonia. Once the cat pictures are out of the way, it's then down to the nitty gritty rules. A photographer is allowed to crop, lighten, or darken the image. What isn't allowed is cutting and pasting chunks of one picture into the next. And most importantly, you're not allowed to interfere with nature to get your shot. Titled Lucky Break, this photograph by Jason Bantle shows a raccoon poking her head out of an abandoned car. Using the back seat as a den for her five cubs, the hole in the glass is large enough for her, but too small for predators such as coyotes. One of my favorites is coming up in the deep sea category. It's a beautiful, unique photograph. We've got a little squid sitting on top of a jellyfish. Cleverly titled Night Rider, this photograph shows an argonaut riding atop a small jellyfish. Now we're not sure why he's doing this, is he hitching a ride, perhaps eating a bit of spare food from the jellyfish, we don't know. But I love this photograph by Australian photographer Wayne Jones. While diving in San Jose in the Philippines, Wayne was drawn to the bright colour of the jellyfish. It wasn't until he moved closer that he spotted the hitchhiker. Talk about incredible timing. Ralph Schneider captured this Weddell seal as it closed its eyes and fell into a deep sleep. Looking oh so comfy despite the icy temperatures, Weddell seals are able to keep warm as their bodies are covered in a thick layer of blubber. Now, I've met a lot of Weddell seals in my time, and unlike fur seals, which are terrifyingly territorial, the Weddells just love to sleep on the ice all day, just like this. So it's a beautiful photograph that captures their behavior. The Wildlife Photographer of the Year Portfolio Award is given to one photographer whose outstanding collection of images focuses on a specific subject or photographic approach. All these photographs are from the same portfolio by Stefan Chrisman, and they're all of emperor penguins in the depths of winter in Antarctica. Working as a scientist in Antarctica in 2012, Stefan used every free minute to document the life of a nearby emperor penguin colony. He returned in 2017, spending a year documenting the lives of these precious creatures. I spent a couple of years in Antarctica and this reminds me, it just takes me straight back to the Antarctic wastes and the depths of winter when all the male emperor penguins are all huddled together to keep warm as they get blasted by minus 40, minus 50 degrees temperatures. So they're all huddling together to keep warm and shuffling around. The trick is not to get downwind of the emperor penguin colony because it's pretty stinky. This is the fifth year that the Australian National Maritime Museum has hosted Wildlife Photographer of the Year, but the first year that we've used these backlit panels, which is why the photographs are so bright and vibrant. These photographs allow us to witness unique moments, encounter the diversity of life on Earth, and reflect on humanity's role in its future, as Dr Tim Littlewood, Director of Science at the Natural History Museum and member of the judging panel said, Photography has the unique ability to spark conversation, debate, and even action. Did a particular image spark or inspire or amaze you? I hope you enjoyed this tour. Thanks for watching.